Diamond Select's Ghostbusters line has been a very anticipated line for me, and has been enjoyable so far to collect. It has had its shares of ups and downs, but for the most part, it's been very solid. Enter Wave 3, which has brought a few unexpected bumps in the road. This video is the combination of the three separate review videos I did, along with a few new closing words at the end, so if you have not watched the single reviews yet, check this one out, and I'll see you again at the end. Diamond Select's Ghostbusters line continues to roll on, and with Wave 3 we have our second release of the heart of the Ghostbusters, Ray Stance. Today we're reviewing the super special version, which includes the diorama piece to build the Gozer building backdrop. The standard version that you can find at Toys R Us will cost you half the price but is missing that diorama part. The packaging is identical to the other figures in the previous waves, giving you a huge window into the figure to show all of his accessories on the front, and on the back we get a bio about Ray along with some other images of the rest of this wave. Out of the box, the figure is pretty close to the original version of Ray from this series. The head sculpt is identical, as are the arms and legs. The only difference here is really that open jumpsuit that exposes his black shirt, and some slime stains on his suit that you could easily just mistake for some dirt. The face looks like Dan Aykroyd, and the details on the suit are spot on. Like all of the Ghostbusters before him, Ray comes with four extra pairs of hands, and just like his previous release, includes the Ecto goggles. He also comes with a proton stream that, with some effort, can attach to his gun. And here is Ray's diorama piece. Like the other Ghostbusters figures in this line so far, Ray has his proton pack, which continues to look amazing and is movie accurate, even with the decals on the pack. It's one of my favorite parts about this line, and especially this figure, but sadly there are some downsides to this figure. While I collected the Mattel line of Ghostbusters figures, I stayed away entirely from the redecos of pretty much all the figures, unless they offered something I really, really want. With the Diamond Select line, I would have absolutely 100% skipped this release of this figure if not for the diorama piece. Aside from a slightly open jumpsuit and some of the stains on it, this figure offers nothing new that I could not get from any of the previous figures, and especially the first release of Ray. I would have loved to have gotten a different head sculpt or some kind of accessory to make this worth getting aside from that diorama piece. Especially for the scaled down version that doesn't come with a diorama piece, this is kind of a figure that is probably going to be warming the shelves for a while. The best thing would have been having the proton pack be easier to remove so that it could be more screen accurate or different when he's maybe not wearing it, but unfortunately this was not the case with this figure. So you're basically getting a re-release with just a different paint job and a buck that has been slightly altered. I love the Diamond Select line of Ghostbusters figures, and unless you're a super hardcore collector like me who wants to complete that diorama, I hate to say this, but I would suggest skipping this figure. The lack of anything new makes this a pretty bland redeco, and with how easy it is to still get the first figure from the very first wave of these toys, I would say just go out and find that one if you really want to ray in the scale and don't care about the diorama pieces. The secretary of the Ghostbusters, Janine Melnitz, has joined Diamond Select's Ghostbusters line at long last. Janine is the second female in this series, the first being a possessed version of Dana Barrett, and the last being the library ghost and Gozer coming up in two later lines. Today we're reviewing the super special Diamond Select version, which includes the diorama piece to build the Gozer building backdrop. The standard version, which you can find at Toys R Us, will cost you half the price but is missing that diorama part. Janine's packaging is identical to the other figures in this series, giving you a very large plastic window to peer at this figure from the inside, and showing off the many accessories that she comes with on the front. And on the back, we get a big bio about Miss Melnitz, along with some other images of the rest of the figures in this wave. Outside of the box, Janine looks just like Ann Potts did in the 1984 movie, with an outfit that is close enough to how she looked on screen. Janine has the same amount of articulation that the other figures have, but with one caveat. Unfortunately, 
Because of her heels and the molded dress around her legs, her articulation there is very limited, since you can't actually bend her legs. Furthermore, having her sit down would be extremely problematic, if not impossible, since that dress is not flexible enough to even let her bend over. Janine comes with a great amount of accessories, which include a second set of hands, a telephone with a phone that you can actually put on and off the hook, one closed Chinese food container, and one open with a lot of detail in it, and the famous buzzer that Janine slammed when the Ghostbusters got their first phone call. These are pretty iconic accessories to come with, and they were great choices by Diamond Select. And here is the piece of the diorama that Janine comes with. Janine is a problematic figure in this already problematic wave of an otherwise great line of figures. The molded plastic that makes her dress dramatically limits her articulation. And as you can see in this video, she seems to be kind of permanently leaning over to one side. And I can't really fix that due to the dress. I love everything about this figure except for that dress, and it ruins many elements of this toy once you do take it out of the box. If you leave it in package, it won't make a difference, but for a loose collector like me, it's a major issue. This is the best Janine figure that we've ever had, but sadly it's far from perfect. The first spook that the Ghostbusters successfully captured has been added to the ranks of Diamond Select's Ghostbusters line. Joining Quitting Time Ray and Janine Melnitz, this toy is a great representation of the Green Goober and possibly the best figure in this wave of Ghostbusters toys. The packaging is identical to the other figures in the previous waves, giving you an enormous window to check out the figure and show off all the accessories on the front. And on the back, we get a bio about Old Onion Head, along with some other images of the rest of the toys in this wave. To be fair, this bio is less backstory on Slimer, as it is more so describing what he does in the movies, but considering how canonically mysterious Slimer is in the movies, that is easily forgiven. Out of the box, Slimer looks perfect. He's much smaller than the other figures, as he should be since he isn't scale with everyone else in this line. The best part about all Slimer figures are the butts, and this one is like something you would see on a Ren and Stimpy episode. There is great paint application with this figure, from his teeth to his fingernails and all of the dirt and grime on his body. If a ghost was ever greasy, Slimer would be that ghost. Slimer comes with not one, but two additional heads meaning that you get a total of three Slimer heads with different expressions. One has a closed mouth, the other open, and the last stuffed with hot dogs from when he pops out of the hot dog cart during the scene where the containment unit explodes. The faces pop in and out very easily to the body, so you can customize him whenever you want with no worries about damaging any joints. Especially since Slimer has no neck joint, it's really easy to take these on and off. Slimer also comes with a stand to help him float in the air, but getting him to stay on that stand was very difficult for me. This may be an issue with my figure only and not other people's, but it was a big problem with me, and considering how important it is for this figure to be floating in the air above the others, that makes it a tough sell for me as a loose collector. And finally, here is Slimer's diorama piece. Slimer is arguably my favorite figure in this third wave of Diamond Select's Ghostbuster figures, despite that issue with the base. The three faces are a really cool addition to finally have for Slimer, and the only thing that would have made this better would be some food for him to gobble up, but luckily that's what miniature stores are for. Diamond Select did an awesome job with this figure, and it fits this line perfectly. So if you're looking for somebody to slime your other characters, you better get this slimer while you still can. If you're a hardcore completist like me, Wave 3 is absolutely worth buying. However, if you're just a casual collector, I would suggest skipping Ray and sticking with Janine and Slimer. This is a wave with a lot of problems for me, Ray being the main one. Jean's articulation with the dress is also a real issue for me as a loose collector, and Slimer's inability to float in that stand adds on to that. This is definitely not my favorite wave in the series so far, but I can at least look forward to Wave 4 coming out in January, which includes a redeco of Bankman that does come with a new head sculpt, Walter Peck, and Gozer, which already looks like a very strong line. So we'll see you guys again in a few months as we look at the penultimate wave of 
Diamond Select Ghostbusters line. 